Hello and welcome to the Horn One Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, consider signing up for the Patreon. There you get ad-free content, early access, exclusive episodes, and monthly supporter hangouts. You can find it at patreon.com slash the Juan on Juan podcast. If you don't like the subscription-based models, there are other ways of supporting the show that are linked in the description. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy this episode. They said it was forbidden. They said it was dangerous. They were right. Introducing the paranoid American homunculus owner's manual. Dive into the arcane, into the hidden corners of the occult. This isn't just a comic. It's a hidden tome of supernatural power. All original artwork illustrating the groundbreaking research of Juan Ayala, one of the only living homunculologists of our time. Learn how to summon your own homunculus, an enigma wrapped in the fabric of reality itself, their power at your fingertips, their existence, your secret. Explore the mysteries of the Aristotelian, the spiritual, the Paracelsian, the Crowleyan homunculus. Ancient knowledge lost to time, now unearthed in this forbidden tale. This comic book holds truths not meant for the light of day. Knowledge that was buried, feared, and shunned. Are you ready to uncover the hidden, the paranoid American homunculus owner's manual, not for the faint of heart? Available now from Paranoid American. Get your copy at tjojp.com or paranoidamerican.com today. Welcome to the One on One Podcast with your host, Juan Ayala. deeper than that let me let me let me let me let me cook with this you had that festival right the group who put that festival together their name is universal parallel it means parallel universe in latin the supernova sukkot gathering was on the same day that the war started the interesting thing is that scientists have been saying for the longest that there was a cold spot bro developing in between boatees leo and virgo And they said that this cold spot could be proof of a parallel universe. This was years ago. Now they confirmed it in 2023 that we indeed do have a cold spot right in between these constellations. And this cold spot, biblically, I talk about bibliomancy, how they translate the Bible into a literal physical strip that's being played out on the world stage. They're naming this cold spot that could be a doorway a portal to another universe, Mystery Babylon, like the woman at the end of Revelation. What if they're opening up this rift in order to escape this reality, slip into that next one, and destroy the one right after it? To another episode of the Horn One Podcast. Your host, as always, make sure to follow the show on social media, the at the one on one podcast on most social media platforms, tjojp.com. Make sure to get your copy, of the homunculus owner's man. Y'all got to cut my nails. If you got to get your homunculus and check, make sure to check out the hum- owner's man. I got to send you one on and uh, tjojp.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, RSS feed, leave a five-star review, all that good stuff. And joining us tonight is one of my favorite researchers. This dude goes hard in the paint. He's been on the show before, and he always brings some new interesting concepts to 
the realm of things. And joining us today is Ani. What's going on, bro? How you been? What do you know? I'm back on the One on One podcast. This is a pleasure, bro. One of my favorite podcasts. Listening while working and doing things throughout the day, bro. You're doing an excellent job, and it's always a pleasure to be here, man. Definitely. Where can people find your work before we get started, Ani? Well, you guys can go to my Instagram, uh, the Spiritual Shape Room One. Put the number one. There's a lot of my work up on there. Or you go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash the underscore spiritual shade room. Or just follow me on YouTube at Ani Osaru. All my work is on there. Awesome. I'll post all the links in the description. I encourage people to to check it out because you, you do a lot of great work. I appreciate it. Class is in session. And, dude, I found something. <laughs> we were talking a little bit before the show and, and how people interact with the show how people reach out sometimes weird or otherwise, right? They, some, sometimes they leave you little clues. They, they give you recommendations. And before we jumped on this, I got a, a comment about a video, mm-hmm. a, a live stream that I did with Narco Longo, the Puerto Rico episode where I did a presentation on the origin story of the mythology, according to the Taino people and all that stuff and something very interesting came up and I need, I might need your help decoding this cause I kind of linked it to some other stuff. And so okay. I'm gonna show you here the comments. So shout out to this guy here or person, the screen name Rye is gold. And they commented on my v- video that I did. I think I want to say a month ago or something like that. And they go bad bunnies, new album released 10, 13 has a song called cyber truck track six. Joe Rogan was just seen shooting an arrow at Elon Musk cyber truck while wearing a Puerto, a Puerto Rico jersey. And I was like, man, usually when things line up like this in the simulation, I go, this is too good to be true. There's no way this is actually true. So I go, bruh, there ain't no way that lined up that smoothly. I saw the picture, didn't notice his jersey. Then I report back. Yo, I just checked it out. GTFO <laughs> here, bro. That's wild. So when you pull up the picture... I go, wait a minute, what's going on? Homeboy has a Puerto Rico jersey. He's shooting at the cyber truck. Okay. So I go, all right, Mm -hmm. all right, that that's fine, whatever. So then I check out the song, and it's from Nadie sabe lo que va a pasar mañana. So this translates to nobody knows what's gonna happen tomorrow. And this is the Mm -hmm. the the album oh, here's the horse here's the horse symbolism all of 2022 was all connected to the horse symbolism even mm-hmm. beyonce's uh album cover has the horse as well so that's not what stood out to me though honey that's not mm-hmm. what stood out to me what stood out to oh. me was right so you have this weird album cover right it's like this mm-hmm. entity riding a horse we have the blue again right you have obviously yeah. the the four horsemen and all this stuff but if you notice this is it's not very it's not very human like so I, I i listened to the song i read the lyrics nothing really too crazy right okay and then i was like hmm i for some reason when i looked at this picture i thought of drake's latest album the for all for all the dogs yeah and this entity reminded me a little bit of this because it got the red eyes kind of dark here mm. so i was mm. like Maybe perhaps this is the same entity, maybe in a different form. And Drake's latest album is called A New Era. Well, another word for era, right? Long and distinct period of history is eon or aeon. And we know that a lot of these occultists, right? They wanted to bring in all these aeons. And we have the aeon of Ma'at, Ma'at right? With Freder uh-huh. Akkad. Then you have the aeon of Horus. And I know we're going to be talking about the tunnels of set a little bit today and some Typhonian oto stuff so that kind of reminded me of that and i go well maybe perhaps they're they're bringing something in because for all the dogs well this could also translate for all the gods right because dog backward is god and i know that kenneth grant has something about the incarnation of gods coming through as dogs it's in the Mm -hmm. night side of eden i believe it is or or the dark side of eden which i forget the the title but it's in that, and it, it, he talks about the the reincarnation of gods as dogs, and you know you have the dog star as well, and all these different concepts. And I was like, okay, so 
what's really going on is this maybe sort of the same or are they tapping into that same collective and it's manifesting as a right this could be the same entity just with a different look right it could be like a shape shifter or something that adjusts itself according to whatever it is and so then you have the weird symbolism on bad bunny and how he he has a tattoo a shout out to isaac weishop who had posted this a while ago and i actually i believe i commented on it and he posted a picture of of bad bunny and he has the rebus from alchemy mm. tattooed on his chest mm -hmm. he also has the two two horses and some other stuff but what are you what are your thoughts on this so far Ani, do you think this well, is a sort of ritual or something? Because this is very it's always bizarre. A ritual. It's always a ritual, bro. It's always a ritual. The word ritual comes from the word ritu, means season. So it is, and we're in each season, there, there's there's rituals. And Drake's son, if you pull that image back up, his son name is Adonis. He drew this image. Adonis, isn't that, that's a Greek god, I believe. I don't know if it's a Greek god yeah. or is a... Yeah, that's just he. So he named his son after a, a particular deity, and his son was not drawing a dog here. I hope you know that he was drawing a goat. He was saying that his dad is a goat, and we know the goat connection to the Baphomet. <laughs> so essentially, what you're looking at here is a what six year old drawing, seven year old drawing of a goat or a Baphomet. It's Phoenicia. Okay, was it was a gourd? Okay, Adonis. Mortal lover oh, of the goddess Aphrodite, which Aphrodite is also very weird too. You know, I'm thinking of of Etedorpa. Have you heard, have you ever read that book, Etedorpa? Yeah, yeah, I've read up on Aphrodite and her connections with us, uh, uh, Psyche. There's a lot of connection with her and Psyche in mm -hmm. mythology and alchemy too. You have the Atalanta Fujins, where he, I believe it's Aphrodite coming out of uh, is it Zeus's head that she comes out of? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah she comes out as you said. That connection. And the sacred, they say she's the sacred prostitute when you go to her page. And that's what they're doing with all of these female artists right now. They're trying to resurrect, resurrect that sacred whore energy. But it also says Adonis is the god of immortality at the top as well. So, yeah, he achieved um, immortality for who was famous for. You know, he achieved it. Okay, yeah. So he's famous for achieving immortality. Check and, this uh, out, bro. Adonis' name comes from a Canaanite word meaning Lord, and most modern mm -hmm. scholars consider the story of Aphrodite and Adonis to be derived from Lev Levantine version of the early Mesopotamian myth of Inanna. And, yeah, Inanna and Dumuzid. And Inanna was mm -hmm. the one that took off the seven pieces of, or was that her sister, Arishkrigal, I think it is. Arishkrigal, yeah. Arishkrigal is his, her sister. Okay, yeah. But they're the same person. I hope you know they're the same person. No, I didn't. When she go, when she goes into the underworld, she becomes a Reshrigo. Just oh. like when Isis goes into the underworld, she becomes Neptes. They're the same de uh, deities, I guess. That's female version. So, uh, so a yeah, they're six, the same being. A six-year-old drew this. His son is six years old. You said. Yeah, six or seven, something like that. Yeah, he drew. I, I, I'm gonna assume he's six because Drake is the sixth god. So it, it, it would make sense that his <laughs> his his album cover has a six year old draw it, you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the Man, six god, six six year old son. They really call him that the six god. Is that what his name is? Yeah, that's his nickname, bro. He's kind his of nickname. Is the he's kind of yeah. fruity, bro. He's sus, dude. Like some of the stuff he be doing, I'm like, bro, this is the. This is the kind of guy to shut the 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 refrigerator door with his hip, you know what I'm saying? Like, oopsie, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Drake has been doing a lot of sus stuff. I don't like. Have you seen the little hair barrettes he he wore for the album? That was real sus. The what? That was very weird. He wore like little hair barrettes on his head. You can look it up. It's on for all the dogs uh, album release or the video, the first video. He got these little hair. Like little girl, it's like different rainbow colors, and I was like, "What? Are, what are you doing, Drake?" Because one of my homeboys, he's a Drake fanatic, and I asked him, "What is up with this, bro?" This? And he was like, "I have no answer." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was he was rocking that for like a couple of weeks. 
So yeah. what are you what are your thoughts? Because anybody right now that is looking at this stuff, right? That that is looking at this, you, you're gonna have a, a big crack because it seems like everything that Drake touches turns to gold. He's got that Midas touch, you know, he puts his name on something and it just it, it goes viral, it, it blows up. And right, a lot of these guys we believe do the, that Faustian pack where it's like, hey, you get X amount of time, but when your time is mm-hmm. up you know, you got to come with me and, and your soul is mine forever, et cetera, et cetera. But you got people who will say and argue, oh, no, this is this is not a cult. This is just either trying to be edgy using the symbolism, which is em- it's just empty symbols nowadays. Right. Because these things don't mean anything. You know, he's not really part of the Illuminati. He's not part of, of any organizations. He's just a successful artist. And they might throw up, you know, the one eyed symbolism every now and again. They he has the you know the owl but you know the owl's cool eh, there's no, there's nothing there's nothing to it you know what i'm saying like there's there's really nothing to it what what do you have to say as far as the people who think that way and what's a, what's on the back cover here what's going on uh, i haven't seen the back cover it's probably more drawings from adonis but um i would say to those people um they're just not meant to know the deep See, the word occult means hidden. Mm-hmm. And hidden is talking about hidden knowledge. Certain people aren't meant, especially if you don't have Saturn in your eighth house. And if you don't have great Jupiter placements, you got to have great Jupiter and Mercury placements. That means you literally came here to expound on knowledge. So, so the occult means people who can understand hidden knowledge that's put before them. They're more of an automaton. They're out here just like an NPC. They're they're out here just floating out just like a bag of paper in the wind. They don't care what direction they go. You know, so they're not even real, tell you the truth. People who don't see this stuff, if it's right in front of their face, I wouldn't insult them and tell them you're not real, bro. You know, like the woman on the plane. (laughs) That person back there is not real. But mentally, I understand that some people come here to be automatons. Some people come here to be intellectuals. And then there, there's people that come here to be um, uh, spiritualists or gurus to to dissect this stuff and put it in its proper place. So so there's an understanding of what all, all of this information is. People who, who aren't on that vibratory level, I don't have nothing against them. I just don't like when they say, oh, you guys are so stupid for looking into this stuff like that. I just, you know, really, I've learned to laugh it off, bro. Back then, it used to bother me. And if anybody else is going through that, you know, just laugh it off. Because w- the type of level of information that we get into is something that you only get once in a lifetime. You know, for us to discover the the deeply intricate mysteries of what the soul is. And that's what we teach on Patreon as well. The soul physics, the actual soul equation what is darkness and what is light what why do we have souls what is the physical dimension for us to understand those informational fields and not go crazy is is very much a gift and it's an attainment coming back into this incarnation for us to have that attainment speaks a lot of our aura and who we are yeah most definitely right those that have the eyes to see and I mean, there's people who are initiated into the mysteries to be able to identify some of this stuff. And I think that's why people feel some type of way, too, when it comes to this sort of thing where they right. There's people who join secret organizations just to be able to learn stuff. Like, how embarrassing is that where you have to swear a, a oath of secrecy? And now here, this regular Joe Schmo guy who went to YouTube University and got his Ph.D. in um, oncology is blowing you out of the water or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, I can see where that would also make someone feel some type of way. And yeah. I'm with you. I take that negative energy and I, and I transmute it and I shoot it right yeah. back. You know what I'm saying? Motivation. Keep going. Keep going, Juan. You're doing great, bro. There's going to be, if you're, if nobody's hating on you, you're not doing nothing right, bro. You got to have haters. <laughs> yeah. You're not doing nothing right until somebody start hating on you. Either haters or secret organizations in your DMs or, or your email, right? <laughs> yeah, if you don't have the Illuminati out here messaging you, you're not doing nothing. So we have here, the, this is the back cover, got an S, got Daddy, BW200. And this also, when he posted it, 
I believe it was for all the dogs October six. But this came out. Mm. It's, oh, it came out October six. The the Bad Bunny one came out October thirteenth. So he got the six, which how you said it was the six god. Then we yeah. have the the and dude, like looking back at a lot of stuff that that I grew up with. It's like triple six mafia, bro. I was like, yo, yeah, y'all was cranking that back then, like nothing, three, like six mafia, yeah, <laughs> uh, three six mafia. And, and then when I, you know, opened up my esoteric eyes or whatever it was, I was like, wait a minute, we were, bro, we were going hard with that stuff back then. Like they were, they were on Wild Boys too with like Steve O and all them. Like these dudes were, yeah. were yeah. big. And it's like, you don't understand sometimes. And I don't like the, the term like woke or asleep or anything like that, but. But sometimes you're asleep to a lot of things that are like right in front of you, right? Like these symbols and things that they're using, you don't even notice. And I think that's part of the art too, where I'm thinking of like the Copio cipher and their whole thing of the sleight of hand was who can write the best ciphers that are, that they can't be broken, right? That, that was, that was their like goal allegedly. Right. But yeah, yeah. you know, like the, the sleight of hand wasn't to operate on an eye and I was how well can you, encode and encrypt these these doctrines that we that we want to pass on to our brethren and only a select few can read these these texts essentially yeah there's semiotics the study of symbols there's symbology there's there's certain angles that light bends itself at to reveal a certain message to to the mind mm-hmm. and, and, and there's waveform patterns that, that that we can diagnose that's what the symbology is here for and and uh yeah, in our generation, bro, like we're a very unique generation. We we pop this stuff off, bro. Uh breaking down the three six mafia of uh, videos, the Rihanna videos and everything. <laughs> uh that, if you weren't it back in two thousand and like six, if you weren't breaking down Illuminati videos and saying these people going to hell <laughs> I was too young, bro. This. Oh, you was too young? I'm yeah. sorry, bro. I'm I only twenty nine, bro. Okay, well, I'm 32, bro. I mean, we, we, oh, we was right there. Right we there. was right. Well, not 2009. I'm sorry. It's like, I mean, not 2006, 2010, 2010. Oh. So you would have probably been just going to college or something like that. Now, I was in high school. I was trying to get laid still. So I graduated in 2012. <laughs> oh, you're okay. You're from 2012. Well, around two, the 2010, we were breaking down the umbrella video, mm. Rihanna's umbrella video. And that's when the Rain Man entity started to show up. And we were saying all oh, these guys are going to hell, you know, saying the whole God thing. And and that's what set off YouTube, actually. YouTube really set off off that conspiracy community, breaking down rap music videos, different uh, genres of music and seeing the symbolism. We popped that off, you know, and now we're the ones today that's pointing out all of this weird stuff going on with these artists. One thing I wanted to show you um, Am I allowed to share screen? Yeah, you just gotta bring it up, and I'm gonna read here okay. real quick in alchemy the the rebus because that's the mm-hmm. and I think Bad Bunny is he bisexual because he does some 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 shady stuff too. I think right wasn't he kissing a dude and dressing up yeah, as like a, he was right. Yeah. So we have the hermaphrodite in alchemy, the figure of a merged man and woman symbolizing the conjunction or marriage of the opposites. The hermaphrodite is also known by its Latin name rebus, meaning double thing. In Greek mythology, Hermaphrodite is an androgyne, androgyne, mm-hmm. androgyne man and woman that was born to Hermes and Aphrodite. So we have the Aphrodite again there again. Our chemical emblems represent the Hermaphrodite as the product of the union of the king and the queen, representing sulfur and mercury who emerge in the in a bath. Sol and Luna, sun and moon, also are representations of alchemical opposites. The hermaphrodite is the culmination of the great work, the philosopher's stones. The hermaphrodite combines all the characteristics of the opposites, spirit and matter, soul and body, masculine and feminine. It is a whole and perfect, complete unto itself and able to reproduce itself. It is the all in one and the all in one. So, the, no, I'm sorry, the one in all and the all in one. Carl Jung said the alchemical symbol of the crown hermaphrodite represents the self which transcends ego consciousness. So we have the, again, representation there. Why would he put something so esoteric on his body, right? And especially it's in that 
that solar plex region, right? That, that center of the chest area right there where the Taoist monks would project that little golden man outwards, right? And try to escape samsara. So just... Again, I'm sure it's just a coincidence, though, bro. I'm sure he's not. Yeah, insane. this is a coincidence. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he just put an alchemical symbol on the chest. But, yeah, well, that, that's the high roast gamos, what you just described in, in union uh, um, psychology. Mm-hmm. The high roast game, gamos is the alchemical transmutation of the mind, you know, the blending of the animus and the anima, the masculine and the feminine have the unconscious mind, you know, coming to surface. And what I'm, I'm showing this, uh, what is his name? Buster Rhymes album. And the, the, the explosion is also representative uh, psychologically, the, the blending, you know, how you have an orgasm, the, the, the sexual connotations and symbolism is very prevalent throughout, throughout alchemy and hermeticism, the blending of the masculine and the feminine, you know, that's how creation is made. All of us came from a union of masculine and feminine energies. Mm -hmm. So here I'm showcasing Buster Rhymes' new album, uh, Blockbuster, and we know what's happening right now in Israel and everything with Palestine. And I was thinking, do these artists be showcasing symbolism of predict- predictive programming of what's to come? Because this seems to me to symbolize WW3, World War Three, bro. You know, with this uh, new album he's about to come out with. Then, then Brent Fayez. Go back what real quick, Ani. There's a face in that in that mushroom cloud. There's a nose. You see the nose and the lip, the bottom yeah. of the lip. Yeah. I thought I was seeing that. I, I thought I was tripping. Yeah, it is a nose and a lip. And then there's wow. like an eye to the left up there on the Yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like an entity yeah. inside of this bomb. Is it Bob? This, this Remember Bob? You know Bob? <laughs> Who's Bob? And it's an entity that's that's brought forth, I believe, in the what's that show? That's super occult. The golly, Isaac watches it all the time. What's the name of that show? I'm losing it, losing it. Oh, forgot the name. Anyways, I'll look it up here mm. in a second. But yeah, Bob is okay. an entity that is born from the atomic, from the atomic bomb. So atomic bomb. Oh, well, yeah. you know the atomic bomb was the most ho- unholy thing that humans did to split the atom in half. Yes, yes. that's that's all into. Um, Typhonian science. Yes, yeah, they ripped the so Twin Peaks, the experiment birthed Bob. Oh yeah, yeah, Twin Peaks. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I watch Isaac Wash Up as well. I, I watch his videos. He's been talking about Twin Peaks a whole lot. Yeah, recently. I haven't watched the show, but I've been meaning to because of Isaac. And I, I think I'm going on Isaac's show this month actually. So at the end of the month, I'm gonna be hooking up with him again and doing an episode. So. Yeah, he goes hard in the paint with Twin Peaks, and from what I've heard, it's super alchemical and super occultic. But you're absolutely right. Grant talked about the the atomic bomb, the nuclear, all these nuclear weapons ripping a rift mm-hmm. in space and time, and letting in the UFO phenomenon that we know and love today. Right? right. Yeah, Oppenheimer just came out, and remember, Barbie came out the same day as Oppenheimer, and on on, on that particular day, um, well, the the movie Barbie. Actually, at the end of the movie, her house exploded. So Oppenheimer is the father of bombs. And he created the equation of how to destroy, you know, or split the atom in half, which is the most uh, unholy act a a, a being can do. That's like destroying creation. And Set is the the god of destruction, which we're going to get into within a second. But it was more metaphysical than thinking about some evil God destroying stuff. It was speaking about the psycho spiritual half of the self destroying the lesser half of yourself, like the, the ego getting rid of the ego. So you can enter into higher spiritual states, but we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. This is Brent, uh, Brent Fayez, uh new album cover. And you see how on the bottom of his shoe, this is, I think this is, this is his clothesline or shoe line. But it has N U W O, and that just looks like to me New World Order. It's just a coincidence, Tony. I'm sure it's nothing. Yeah, it's just coincidence, you know. <laughs> big Godzilla foot coming out with New World Order on it. But um, also you have uh, SZA's album had predict the programming to the submersible, and if you look at the song she had on her album, a lot of her 
yeah, this this album was released this summer, but a lot of her songs were showcasing what was going to happen with that submersible. And you did a good job of pointing out the name of the Shamir, you know, the whole King Solomon type thing. Mm -hmm. Then we went down the whole Illuminati worm tunnel. (laughs) That was dope. Yeah, shout out to Donut. (laughs) Shout out to Donut with that. I told him we got to do Illuminati vampires next. Yeah, bro. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot of things I would like to speak about uh, with this Typhonian thing, especially with Oppenheimer and Barbie coming out. I called it Barbenheimer, (laughs) you know, and what that representation is. And one thing we should understand is for us to look into this science and see exactly what's happening. First of all, let me just detail this for you, bro, and your audience. Israel in Gaza is a light and dark physics equation. How do I know that? Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel came out on the 25th. This is day 19 of the crisis over there. So, you know, the 19 Sun Tarot card. He says, we are the people of light. They are the people of darkness. So that makes you think, why would he say something like that? This is very occult. And I spoke about this recently because when this whole thing popped off, one one thing you have to understand, hold on. One thing we got to understand about this Israel thing is that the Sukkot festival was the beginning of it all. Remember that girl that went missing, bro? The one that faked it? Yeah, she faked her whole thing. Her mm-hmm. name was Shani. Her name is Shani. I don't know if I have a picture of her, but Shani went missing at something called the Sukkot Festival. And this Sukkot Festival, I've been highlighting this for weeks, bro. I did I did it on my YouTube and I talked about it on Generation Z. The word Sukkot is called the holiday of the harvest. But it says, even though there isn't any harvest. So why would they call it the holiday of the harvest? And this is when the attacks happen. I won't say the group's name, but this is when it, the, the attacks started to happen. And they called the festival Supernova Sukkot. So is a harvest of a supernova. This is a physics thing going on. Where are we talking about this the whole same, Israel? The same girl. I'm talking about the the girl that said she stopped in the middle of the road to pick up a kid and it turned out to be like a whole fake thing. Are you talking about that same girl? Are you talking about some are you talking about this girl? Talk about this girl. Yeah, I saw I saw this the girl. videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking okay, about something completely girl. different. <laughs> oh, no. I'm talking about what's going on over there, bro. But her name's Shani. You know Shani is Vedic for Saturn? Well, that Saturn is also the... Isn't he the god of harvest or something like that? He's got the scythe yeah, or whatever. Exactly. That's exactly. And that, there you go. Exactly. So Shani is the planet Saturn in Hinduism. So her name means Saturn. She was kidnapped at the Sukkot festival the holiday of the harvest and then scientists and physicists were talking about this constellation boates having a cold spot in between it and eridanus but you see how boates holds the scythe like saturn mm-hmm. and you know who is he think that's a coincidence that's boates is a is a it's a venerated constellation right in between uh draco um leo and virgo so Boates is some type of mythological figure. You know, I, I, I really I don't really get into who he exactly is as, as a deity, but everybody knows you, you've seen the, the books constellation before. right? They, they pronounce it Boates, but it's spelled B-O-O-T-E-S. I, this is the first time I'm hearing about that before. So this is all new to me, bro. I'm, I'm looking it up now to see who he is, like what his significance is in the. So it's a thir- it's the 13th largest constellation of course and contains one of the brightest star yeah <laughs> brightest stars in the sky Arcturus uh, so the name of the the name of the star is Arcturus and I'm sure that's got yeah. some so it's called yeah Arcturus yeah Alpha Bootes the fourth brightest star in the night sky and the brightest star in the northern constellation so what who's this guy let's see so it says Boates is in an Egyptian legend is a guardian 
uh, of the hippopotamus of the evil. He kept the evil pole stars under control. So his job is to keep the evil pole stars under control. His name means the one who is coming, the savior in Pisces who frees humanity from subservience to the farm. He eternally shepherds the stars around the North Pole. The star Arcturus in the constellation Boates are referred to more or less interchangeable. Arcturus is known esoterically as the herder of divine will emanating from the seven stars of the Big Dipper and acts as a bridge between Virgo, the Virgin, the nourisher of the Christ consciousness within form. Oof. Also, Homer mentions Boates in the Odyssey as the celestial reference for navigation, describing it as, quote, late setting, unquote, or, quote, slow to set, unquote. So I thought that was interesting mm-hmm. there too. But yeah, we're talking about some some powerful stuff. So it definitely has some. So another myth associated with Boates by Hegenus is that that of Ic- Icarus, who was schooled as a great farmer and winemaker by Dionysus, which we know Dionysus is significant in the occult as well. Icarus, I think that's how you say it, made wine so strong mm. that those who drank it appeared poisoned, which caused shepherds to avenge their supposedly poisoned friends by killing Icarus. I've said it like different three different times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it's, is it Icarus you talking about pronounced? Well, I don't know how to. It, how would you say that word? Is it? Oh, where is it? Probably a car. If it's not Icarus, it probably is Icarus. Where is he at? Where is he at? I know Icarus is the the one I think the, right here, the, Icarus, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Icarus, yeah. So right. uh, Icarus's dog brought his daughter Aragon, Aragon to her father's body, whereupon she and the dog committed that thing. Zeus then chose to honor all three by placing them. What in the world, bro? Canis Major and, and Minor. That's how we get that. Yeah. The dog star, what? right? Is that the dog star? Yeah. Yeah, Candace Major Minor is the dog star. That's serious. We're go we're 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 coming full circle, bro. We're coming full circle with the 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 what is it? The for all the dogs, right? <laughs> for so, all the dogs. Yeah. So maybe that's what it was right. It could be pointing towards that, bro, for all the dogs. And here you have this festival that was done in accordance to this constellation. This constellation is the one that's that's responsible for putting up the dogs in the stars in the mm-hmm. sky, essentially. So. Yeah, he he the one who put it up in the sky, and it, it goes deeper than that. Let me let me let me let me let me cook with this. Um, let me show you something. Okay, so you had that festival, right? The group who put that festival together, their name is Universal Parallel. It means parallel universe in Latin. And look, the Supernova Sukkot gathering was on the same day that the war started, right? Um, The interesting thing is that scientists have been saying for the longest that there was a cold spot, bro, developing in between Boates, Leo, and Virgo. And they said that this cold spot could be proof of a parallel universe. This was years ago. Now they confirmed it in 2023 that we indeed do have a cold spot right in between these constellations. And this cold spot, biblically, I talk about bibliomancy, how they translate the Bible into a literal physical strip that's being played out on the world stage. They're naming this cold spot that could be a doorway, a portal to another universe mystery Babylon, like the woman at the end of Revelation. So now the woman at the end of Revelation gets a spot out here in the constellations, in the stars, right? By Boates and the dogs. You see the dogs here? She's right next to the dogs in in, in Boates. And simultaneously what's happening with that, you have this guy, this 33-year-old I don't know if you heard this story, but this was one of the weirdest stories ever. When the attack happened in Israel, this 33-year-old guy, he was bleeding. They still didn't say why he was bleeding, but he's 33. You know, the Masonic connection to that number. 
They said that he dove into the central void of the 9-11 memorial pool uh, that resembles a Saturnian, a Saturn symbol. You see how it looks like a cube? Mm -hmm. Just like they they center around the cube. But he dove into this into this um, pool, bro, but they called it a central void. So this 33-year-old dove into the central void the same day where they said in the skies there is a parallel universe opening up between Boates and Canis Major and Eridanus. Now, Eridanus is important. This is where my mouse is. This is the river Eridanus. And the void is right here by Eridanus. Why is Eridanus important? The war, if you see a model of all of the attacks from that militant group, I won't say the name on here, but the, the militant, uh, so the militant, this is a, a, a chart of all of the attacks, bro. What does this look like to you? To me, it looks like a atomic model of an atom. And they're literally acting out a physics equation. So Gaza would be the nucleus. Then you go out to Jerusalem and then you end up what? All the way out here in Jordan. Now, if you know, biblically, Jordan is famous for uh, in the Bible as a river, the River Jordan. You ever heard of the River Jordan before? Yeah. Well, in the sky, the River Jordan name is Eridanus. Eridanus is the River Jordan. You can just type it in. Even some of our best astrologers astrologers have said that, that Eridanus is Jordan in the Bible. And this void is right here a super void and it, it just all connects there 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 was a harvest this is all a energy grab for this parallel universe opening up out in the skies they eat the people who funded the event name is parallel universe <laughs> you can't get around it you know so i'm i also highlighted how when he said the people of israel Israel are the people of light and the people of Palestine are people of darkness. This is also an equation. If you look into the Hebrew text, they denote light and darkness between the three mother, let, three mother letter, letters of Hebrew. Aleph, Mem, and Shin. And Yod is, it represents like the portal, the the um, the Ain. The you beyond. heard of Ain song? Yeah. yeah, the beyond. Um, Gaza is Aleph, Jerusalem is Shin, and Jordan, no, Mem is Jerusalem, I'm sorry, Gaza is Aleph, Jerusalem is Mem, and Jordan is Shin, and the Yod is the two, there's always two Yods, uh, bro. The Yod always is broken up into two, it has to be two Yods, that's why it's two lines, and then the two lines here becomes the Aleph, you see? And the Yod is important to the physics of darkness. So we're witnessing them showcase how darkness and light interacts with each other. It's the equation. It's the equation of darkness of how it becomes light. Now, prior, people don't understand darkness is the first form of light. Have you ever heard this in the, in the Typonian tradition? Yeah, and I'm thinking of, of why the alchemists love the book of Genesis so much because, right, first there was darkness and then yeah. the light. The light came. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's physics. So darkness is called primal light, light before light, because how does light come into the dimension? The only thing happening out there in space is a squeezing, a contraction. And the contraction, when, when darkness squeezes on it, squeezes down on itself, a explosion happens, and that's what we call stars. So that's the only thing happening out there. And it's the same thing happening down here. I mean, if you think about 
intercourse, something is squeezing on you and boom, a baby's here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I didn't know if that was gross or not, but no, no, you're good. You know, and okay. <laughs> but that's what's happening. I mean, is darkness is representative alchemically as the Yoni and we have light is representative as the, you know, the phallus, mm-hmm. you know, poking out like light shining through the window. Yeah. So yeah. basically the God set is what the Typhonians and who, who are the Typhonians? I've explained this before. I'm pretty sure Juan and Mario explained this, but just from my definition, they're the pre-dynastic G- uh, Egyptians that taught the Egyptians all of their mysteries and all of these black magic brotherhoods, they're following equations laid down by the Typhonians. Typhon was an ancient goddess. She's comparable to Tiamat. She's comparable to um, Tyert, Tyert in the Egyptian text. You remember the father, father, mother that we was joking on yeah. on the last video. <laughs> so, <laughs> Set is her son. Set is Sirius. Set is the star Sirius. We get that out of the way. But in the Egyptian mythology, Set represents chaos and darkness. He also represents confusion. But the confusion is darkness because when you're out in the middle of the dark, you're you're confused. You don't know where to go because it's dark. It's because darkness is on another dimension. So in another dimension, darkness is light. It's another form of light. So we just see darkness in the physical differently than what it would be vibrating on another dimension. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I've always said this, that the, the secrets to a lot of these mysteries I've noticed, and again, I don't have it figured out, but from my esoteric and occult studies, it's about what you're saying. Absolutely about the light and the way that the light interacts with, with matter. And and I think that, right, if you look at the Knights Templar logo, it's the drawing of a light photon, right? So these groups that figure mm-hmm. out these secrets, they put them out in the limelight to flex, like, yo, it's hidden in plain sight. Here you are. I'm wearing Bye. it on my shirt. I'm putting it on my money. And then you have, like, Pink Floyd with the, with the prism and the way. And the reason I say this is because one of my favorite – places to study and and topics to study about is the whole John D and Edward Kelly. And a lot of the interactions that would happen with the room, the way the layout was all done and everything had to do with the way Uh Edward Kelly was scrying and the way that the light was coming in through and interacting with his environment. So the light, and that's why you have the Illuminati, Los Alumbrados, Uh you have all these, you know, these light, beings and how you're saying that we are the light you are the darkness and all these different things are part of of the esoteric secrets and i think that is why the all-seeing eye is a thing right the the eye of providence Mm -hmm. and all these different things and all these paintings with jesus being shot in with a on a on a light like a light streak like all these different things that they're pointing out like these esoteric and occult principles and it goes back to how you're saying the light but before the light there was the darkness and i'm saying existing on this other Mm -hmm. realm and i'm translating a work right now from 1568 i believe it is Mm -hmm. uh agadius gutman is the guy's name was a german philosopher alchemist i guess he was he was somebody there's there's very 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 little information on this guy and uh-huh. it is 1,200 pages on the first two chapters of Genesis. And I've translated bits oh, yeah. and pieces here here and there. And one of the things that stood out to me uh, one, in the table of contents was, and in the beginning, the secrets hidden within that saying, just that saying alone, and in the beginning, there was X, Y, Z. So he's breaking, bro, he wrote 1,200 pages. On the first two chapters of Genesis, twenty-four lectures in total. Yeah. I can see that. You know what I'm saying? I so can see that. in mm-hmm. the just he goes the secrets held within the beginning. So he's gonna break down. I haven't trans. I don't know what's in there, bro. I haven't translated <laughs> it. But mind you, what I, like, I would like to hear it. When the last time somebody read that particular and and guess where guess where guess guess what library. 
I mm-hmm. requested scanned copies from Ani. Guess what library? We're talking about Los Alumbrados, right? Uh-huh. The Illuminati. Guess what library has this text, bro? Guess. Take a walk. Prin- Princeton? Bavaria. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, I should have made a German connection, yeah. Bavaria, and I actually <laughs> ordered. So what ended up happening... So this is this is it in 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 text, and what ended up happening was, oh, we lost on E. Uh oh, <laughs> the Illuminati. Let me get off my cord here. The Illuminati don't want us to know what's going on, but yeah, they kicked you out of here, bro. They said, nope, not today. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't know what the hell happened. So what would you say though? I got this copy off of Amazon, right? So mm-hmm. I get the oh, okay. Gutman, right? Yeah. And it's it's uh it's a whole thing, it's in German. But what ended up happening was that I was trying I was trying to correct the stuff that my program didn't pick up, and it turns out these people are just selling the scanned copy of the actual text, which I already have. So oh, what, I, wow. what I thought it was, I thought it was an OCR, like actually typed out copy. Right, so right. I send them an email and I go, Hey, I'm going to return this. I paid $45 or $50 for this. I don't want this. I thought it was a, you know, like an actual typed out copy. So I can see which letters my program didn't pick up. And they told me, That's Hey, good. you know, we're sorry. Go ahead and just keep it. Right. Cause we're not going to charge you for, you know, we're real sorry, but they essentially just, took it off of archive.org and just printed it onto a, a, a book and just sold me that. And I was like, I don't want that. I want the, the real deal. Like I wanted to see, wow. you know, it was a typed out or something much better than what I got, but mm-hmm. this is essentially what it's going to look like once I am done. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot, bro. It's a lot, but that's, that's why. A lot, bro. Yeah. But yeah, it needs to be man. done Ani, because we have to bring this knowledge. It's not, it's, it's lost knowledge, bro. You know? It is. It is. I would love to hear your broadcast on that, because I think the study of what happened in the beginning of Genesis has something to do with what's going to happen in the end. The beginning is the end. The alpha is the omega. And I've been looking deeply into the physics of darkness, just understanding the equations and understanding the different forms of light, because we think that the light we see In the physical realm, you know, there's a spectrum of light. We think that's the end all be all of what light is, but there's different vibratory levels of light. Astral light is more on a lower level than it is when you're looking into etherical or what's called perugic, that's spiritual light. You know, the ash, we always confuse because people think the astral plane, just because people go in astral travel or they project themselves they believe that this plane is the, the all the all in all spiritual plane, but that's not really truthful, bro. The astral plane is just the blueprint layer of the physical realm. It's like a, a backing. It's like a backup foul to the spiritual realm. I mean, to the physical realm. It's like it's, that's all it is—a back backup foul. The astral realm is here for us to practice to enter into that spiritual light. So we we can dib and dabble with the astral plane to get a practice with our spirituality. And spirituality means efficient management of God energy within us. That's what spirituality, that's another definition we can look at it as. So we're, we're efficient, efficiently managing how we use our energy, our effervescence, and we can project ourselves into different avatar bodies. We're not just in this physical shell. All of these shows are looking into multiverse now. Have you looked into any TV series lately? Don't have the time. I know you you got a lot of stuff going on. I mean, I watched uh, Yeti Massacre the other night, um, the Diat Law of Pass. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. What was that about? Yeti <laughs> about what? a Soviet Union killer Yeti that took out a oh. group of hikers. Oh wow! Oh wow! Is that a like a a, a new 
movie that just came out or is it no this happened in 1956 bro and they still don't know what happened to these people they got ripped apart one dude's heart exploded one lady got her tongue ripped out like some crazy stuff happened and we were just talking about on another show they're they're creating homunculus bro i I got some information i want want you to look into in geoengineered transhumanism the magical head i want to send you this whole manuscript yes called the magical head and it lists the history of the homunculus uh, magical experiments with the mind throughout history. Yeah, it's a woman by the name of Elena Freeland that wrote it. Interesting. I've never heard about that before. So yeah, most definitely. Yeah, but um, yeah. So some sh- TV shows out. Loki's out right now. Loki is very metaphysical. Is talking about the multiverse. Um, Doom Patrol. I don't know if people ever look into Doom Patrol is weird as hell, bro. You're having cockroaches having sex with rats. Yeah, it's just a weird show, but there's a lot of science. And Doom Patrol is DC, bro. This is this, this DC. They're a superhero group with a bunch of messed up problems with them. They're real messed up. And they their trauma bonding with their issues. They have like a knockoff Professor X in it that did experiments on them yeah it's funny as hell bro you watch it it's like it's, it's really i think you enjoy that show it's real dope it shows the humongous what's it on yeah. what network is on i'm not sure i watch it on a program yeah i, I, have, I, I, I have a website too but i get dude i get at least i want to say at least th- i want to say three emails a month on just hey this show has a homunculus in it Check, yeah, check yeah. check check this show out, bro. It's got a homunculus in it. At it's least... on Max. That's what it's on Max. I don't even know what that is. HBO. But... Yeah, yeah, HBO. Oh, that's what it's on. Okay, well, let's just say Max. So they need to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so we have uh, all these shows coming out. It's predictive programming, and I wanted to talk about something real quick because you know you're 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 going on us a lot to unpack. And one mm-hmm. of the things I talked about in the episode I released this week was Paracelsian prophecies and how Paracelsus mm-hmm. was talking about how, you know, the apocalypse and the, another definition of the apocalypse is like unveiling. And Paracelsus in the late 16th century was writing about giants and these mm-hmm. creatures that are being portrayed in these shows that they will be revealed. And when you see those, that is hinting at the downfall of an empire or of a nation or an oncoming something bad is about to happen and i think maybe with the cinemagicians maybe we won't see how because you showed that foot coming down like nwo at the bottom with like a giant right and all these different yeah. things maybe mm-hmm. it won't be like actual giants in the you know in the godzilla i think there's a godzilla movie coming out too soon but you know it's not going to be like actual entities maybe it's in this collective that they put out in front of the media which we know is 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 a predictive programming and may and, and that in itself is a sort of col- like the marvel universe it's a whole different parallel universe mm-hmm. in ours right so it's a universe within a universe you got the the russian doll like you know homunculus all the way down well that's another effect and this void that you're you're talking about again mm-hmm. thinking outside the box what if what if let's just let's just think because i'm an alchemy guy what if and I know you're familiar with what I'm about to talk about. It's it's an idea that was presented by a certain esoteric researcher who's not with us anymore. If you catch my drift, you know, R.I.P. Oh, T.T., oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. in her book uh, that is that is very don't, interesting. Don't I'm not going to say Please. it, but okay. <laughs> people know what I'm talking about. I've, I've talked no, about right. it. I've, I've referenced it before on the show. But that book. <laughs> In that, it's about a, a a very wealthy person that they essentially in alchemy you create a new universe. Right? Yes. So in Genesis, and yes. this is why Genesis is so important because Genesis, according to these alchemists, it's uh, considered the most important book in the in the in alchemy. And mm-hmm. Genesis shows you how to create a universe, how to create, you know. So, Carl Jung called it yeah. the Unus Mundus, but you know it's 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 like the philosopher, so whatever it is you want to call it, like it, it's an actual universe. And in yeah. alchemy, you create a universe and you slip into it. But 
at the same time you destroy the one that you're leaving behind. Yes. So what if again I'm just I'm just, you know, shooting shooting spitballing here. I'm mm-hmm. gonna say shooting blanks, but we're not shooting blanks over here. But spitballing. What if again this is an alchemy how you're saying they're 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 acting the world's a stage. Who said that? <laughs> well, yeah. well probably yeah. one of the most occultic guys who contributed to the English language, right? The world's mm-hmm. a stage. Well, right. they're acting on this this stage, a ritual. And what if these alchemists, I believe they're alchemists, Ani. I believe that they're still practicing. They're, they're manipulating matters, symbols, all these things. What if they're opening up this rift in order to, I'm not trying to fear monger, but escape this reality, slip into that next one, and destroy the one right after it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I did a video on the physics of sacrifice. Um, They're doing obscene right rituals so they can shock the spirit. So they want to do something so inhumane that it causes the praetor human intelligence within their DNA to rise out. Now, whether you want to call it, you know, extra interdimensional or reptilian, whatever you want to call it, because nowadays I call these terms social terms in the in, in the conscious community or cult community. Reptilian is a social term. We know damn well we have never seen nobody change into nobody. And people who said they saw that, they probably were on psychedelics or they probably was on some type of drug. Wrong. You know? I was I I know of somebody, I have evidence. I'm gonna pull up a picture here in a second of a okay. real reptilian, bro. So okay. give me well, a couple that, minutes because okay. I've seen them, dude. All right. So Okay, but the, the term reptilian what let me ask you a question how the hell does an interdimensional being take on a form of an earthly uh animal from our animal kingdom why would it pick out of all of the different plethora of prototypes of species what is the see what i'm trying to reveal to, to you in, in your audience these things are not reptile that's a social term reptilian is a social term what you saw was probably a shapeshifter you know, that's a that's a more unique social term. But the, the name it reptilian H.P. Lovecraft was the whole entire Cthulhu mythos and Necronomicon was warning the future about alien cults, people who follow a alien cult. And there were certain people, a certain group of people who are at war right now. You know, the use <laughs> use your imagination that created a mythoposis, you know, of starseed races and the draconian side of the race became the new Satan. So we're moving into an alien religion and now the reptilians ain't nothing but Satan. <laughs> That's all it is. So we're trans, let's transfer one theology and we're, we're putting it into this new little philosophy or whatever you want to call it, alienism, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it today, realism, you got realism, Israelism. <laughs> so, we're, 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 we're conceding when we call it reptilian, we're conceding to the people who put the term out there. And, and literally when you look at where the word reptilian comes from, it comes from the Draco constellation, Draconian. So reptilian how do you explain Draco. this, Ani? This oh, reptilian oh. that was <laughs> trick or treating yesterday. From what I understood, this is Hillary Clinton's <laughs> great, great. He's got some Nikes on bro. But this is Hillary Clinton's great, 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 great grandfather. And that thing is so ugly, bro. He told me, bro. So again, that is so ugly, man. You're crazy, bro. Yeah, even has the robe. He has the he has the ritual robe too. He got that. He got them Nikes on, bro. He got them them reptilian deluxe deluxe Nikes limited edition. So. Again, I'm just saying, bro. No, nah, but I'm I'm with you, dude. I, I believe oh, yeah. So, yeah, this this all seriousness. There's re- literally people that emailed me so much about reptilians. <laughs> Based on, you know, I did a video the reptilian myth. Mm-hmm. The reptilian myth is a big hit. And people like the video, but some people had a big problem with it. But just the point that I'm making is that this is a new religion that they're creating mm-hmm. and we have to be careful with socialistic terms in these communities to actualize them and really believe in it now if you use a term like humunculus that's a loose term that could mean a lot of things 
a homunculus can be manifested in different types of ways. You know, it's not only just a, a reptoid looking being that could be a homunculus, right? Mm hmm. A reptoid looking being, or it could be just a clone. That could be be a humunculus. So um I just want people to start to conceptualize what are we looking at and expand consciousness to have critical thinking skills to understand that yes, we're on a world stage and they're controlling what words and terms we use. And that's alchemy within itself. Because if you say reptilian enough a time enough times you're 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 manifesting in reality so the generation be behind us they're going to come behind us and they're going to put this into a new religion and it's going to be us responsible for not making it clear that these terms are just socialistic they're not actual lies things yeah, no, and that, it becomes a collective egregore so it it manifests itself yeah. in reality but Ani, and uh, you, you can give me your input on this. What if, because I believe, right, you mentioned H.P. Lovecraft. I believe that these things, they also, and this is this is Typhonian as well. This is Grant, where these things that we're perceiving as these entities, these reptilians, whatever it may be, these mm -hmm. grotesque beings, they manifest themselves in our waking state in that form because we're not mm -hmm. in the correct state of consciousness and, and again that sounds very weird to say like how can something so de you know demonic looking for a back lack of a better word something so grotesque how is that uh, how could that even be a good thing to begin with right because we've been programmed to anything that looks bad is bad and i've known people friends of mine who have done you know trips and met in these different medicines where they see grotesque things but they're yeah, not bad they're not they're not they don't feel like they're going to harm them so i've always understood mm -hmm. it maybe they're tapping into this thought form let's just use the word thought form right because essentially it's 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 what maybe we're perceiving as because it's so grotesque to us in our waking state but maybe if we were to see it in our deep sleep state it would be an angel right just a, just just something something mm -hmm. to because mm -hmm. we we hear depictions of these angels looking gnarly a whole bunch of eyes, four different yeah. heads, like super gnarly. And it's like, well, maybe you're seeing it that way because that's the form, you know, your mind can't even begin to comprehend what is being, what what they're seeing. They can't even begin to, to understand, right? Because chaos magic, everyone goes, oh, it's, it's, it's order out of chaos. Chaos magic is, is unorganized. No, 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 no. It's organization beyond comprehension. Mm, okay i like that so it's organ think about that organization beyond comp it transcends what you can even grasp reality wow. wise you understand so i think that's yeah. part of what's going on as well when it comes to this idea of of and paracelsus talked about that i think that these things are also elementals where paracelsus mm -hmm. talked about it how you know there's different dimensions and some yeah. things are able to sometimes they vibrate a certain type of way and you're able to slip in or slip out of this reality and maybe for a second some people see things that 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 maybe they weren't supposed to see at that time I and mean, we're talking about cold spots on i know space is fake and gay we, we, we talk we can talk yeah, about yeah, that yeah, too yeah. but but you know cold <clears throat> spots in this and and dude even per, bro paracelsus talked about about space i'm gonna read this to you real quick and i and i did mm -hmm. on on this the episode I just dropped where um I went pretty deep on onto the into the elementals where I thought it was something that was like, hey, you know, this is super elementary, you know, it's it's nothing to this. But oh, yeah, there's some there's some real physics to that. The elementals. Bro, this dude was going hard. You talk yeah. about like the silks and the salamanders and the gnomes and the, yeah, there's a book on it. Yeah, the Comte the Gabalias is that you're talking I about? This dude is crazy. Come on, bro. Yeah, yeah. I got you, bro. So check out this this sound clip that I that I got made. It's one of my favorite sound clips nowadays. So space is fake and gay. So according to Paracelsus, that shit is fake AF. All right, and here's our homeboy Paracelsus, and he said 
This is one of the things that he said here. This will mean the ultimate. So this is what I'm talking about. Like letting go of, of sometimes you have to unwrap your mind around certain concepts, which is something that I think we do a lot better than the regular person, right? When we're, talk, we're yeah. talking about these concepts, we're able to, I, I, I hate when people comment like, oh, did you know the homunculus is symbolic? Yes, bro. I already, you know, for the sake of conversation, I already, I've already gone over that, right? Let's, let's, let's focus on what's going on in front of me. Let's d- decipher and interpret what's going on in front of me, even if we don't agree, because sometimes we don't agree on everything, but right, right, right. Paracelsus goes on, this will mean the ultimate conquest of space through the realization that there is no such thing as space, but mm. merely an infinite expanse of unfolding areas of visible or invisible, known or mm-hmm. unknown life, energy, and substance. There is no vacuum in the universe, and the nearest thing to a vacuum, according to Paracelsus, was the brain of one of his fellow professors at Basel University. So even, even right, you have <laughs> Carl Jung talking about the inner space. Right, the the, yeah. the inner space. So so think inner about space. that. The only vacuum to ever truly exist, the closest mm-hmm. thing to the true va- is our brain. So yeah. imagine the the things that are that are still locked up in here that maybe we can unlock through again letting go of 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 certain stigmas and things. And that's why I like to have open conversations. And I have to sometimes, you know, people automatically think just because you're talking about a certain topic that you automatically believe. It's like, no, I'm here to to see what's going on. Even if it's something that goes against my beliefs, I still want to know. Right. You know what I'm saying? The, the How you're saying the physics yeah. of it. Hell yeah. Me too, bro. I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to sit around and say, I don't agree with that. I don't want to <laughs> hear that. I don't agree with that. That's just gay. You no, know, then we're not getting nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's why I like to come to different platforms to hear different perspective because really we're just trying to solve this soul puzzle put the pieces together and i completely agree with paracelsus that we are literally dealing with something inwardly a inward alchemical equation they call it the neoplatonic formula that's inside we're trying to solve that neoplatonic formula and uh, it's non-Euclidean. It's nothing here to actually put the mathematics, the variables and constants together to solve it. It's, it's, it's an ongoing equation. It's chaos physics. Chaos physics it, it doesn't solve it. Just As soon as you solve it, it turns into something else. It turns into a whole other equation. So That's the occult too, bro. That's the occult. That's the serpent eat, eating his tail. Mm-hmm. You know, the Ouroboros. So um, I believe that every one of us, we're meeting each other or we meet people in our lives. People, every person is a portal and you gain a sub personality from another person. If you are able to engage in their auric space long enough, you gain a sub personality. Think about it. You gain a sub personality from your mom. You gain one from your father. If you're, you know, if you have both parents, you gain one from your close family members, then your friends, you take a piece of your friend with you on your journey. There's a piece of your friend deep within you. And of course, you have you at the root of that. Then you have these branches that's branches branching out, just like quantum physics is, is it branches out and there's pieces of everything, the com- com- the cumulative of everything teachers you know you had different your favorite teachers you you take all of that with you and you are a consortium of it all that's alchemy so you blend it together and you become who you are in the world so we're taking the same thing you've done with sub personalities with people alchemically and we're, we're we're taking different philosophy and research from Juan, from Ani, from any other other people looking into this research. And we're making ourselves um, expand consciousness by understanding it in a way that we can understand it. You don't have to understand it the way I understand it or Juan understands it. <clears throat> the only important thing is that you're understanding it because we all vibrate at different levels. Our auric fields are set at different levels. But This is hyperdimensional warfare that they're doing on us because their job is to confuse us. Their job is to interject the mythoposis, to set it up, to make it think like something that isn't literally real and physical is very much a riddle. 
to the part of the Neoplatonic formula that we probably missed and we could have inserted it and it could have solved another portion of it, of the problem. So it's always uh, big for me to look at your channel, look at other channels to see the angle. Where is one at in this whole thing right now? You know, we're all, tell you the truth, we're all mini universes kind of. You're in your own type of universe. I believe literally that we are individually gods. And when I say gods, we're lords of our own reality. We are the lord of our reality. We control our reality. I I believe big on, um, what do you call it? When you have to take, uh, I forgot the term for it, but I believe that we are lords of our own reality, each and every one of us in our environment is representative of our own universe. I'm, I'm peering into your universe. You're peering into my universe when we speak. And if you can talk on this type of vibratory level, that's even more expansion. If you even have the vibrational of conscious field patterns to, to raise and, 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 and communicate these type of topics of discussion, this is very rare. How, how many times during the day that you can talk about the God set to a person? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're probably zero, no, you know, nobody, bro. All right. So this is, this is a rare realm to enter and it is, it's phenomenal, man. To me, it's phenomenal, you know? So the physics of darkness uh, you, and, mm-hmm. and you, you talked about how, they're applying that, right? I, I mentioned the the Rogan thing, which kind of comes full circle with that constellation. All this is it's part of the part of the ritual, part of the process that they're going in. And in your opinion, because not and not to make it like a making a prophecy or anything or a prediction, but where do mm-hmm. you think it stops, bro? Do you think that? And again, not to fear monger, but do you think maybe we are living in some sort of end of times? Is the is it symbolic and not like actual literally? What do you think that their end goal is, bro? Like, you know, from your personal research and from your personal experience from looking into this. Okay. Satanism, let's just get this correct. Um, and this is coming from Ani's universe, as I just said. Satanism is the worship of of material material or materiality to be bonded for your soul and spirit to be binded bonded and, and and conjoined to this physical realm is satanism to me because what is the true um order of things did did the soul be, come before humans or did the humans come before souls do we believe, do you believe that we are spiritual beings having a physical existence? If you believe that, then you know that the soul had to come before we were humans, which would mean that we're probably interdimensional beings. We just had a pit stop, a long ass pit, pit stop. Who knows how long, you know, we stopped to get some Lunchables and we're like, oh, let me go back in here. Give me some coffee. Oh, you know, I want to get some chips. Oh, I want to go back. So we kept coming back kept going back in the store and we never left some of us pulled out some of us got in our spaceships and pulled out whatever the soul left this dimension some of us kept coming back so you ask what is the do i believe first of all yeah it's always in times it's always in times but the end time is metaphysical is is in time there's always a threat of destruction you always see in the marvel movies in the comic books are relaying what's actually happening they're, they're showing you in different multiverse forms of ourself. There's always a threat of something that's going to end existence. It has to be that because that's one of the seven laws of hermeticism, polarity. If there's something real good happening for us, there has to be something very, very bad on the other end. So we, I don't, that's why I don't worry about all the evil stuff. That's just part of this universe. That's duality in actuality. So what are they, their goal is to keep us into the materiality that's their goal that's the biggest achievement whether that's upload us into metaverse 
They just came out with another metaverse game, bro, on Halloween. And it has some Necronomicon stuff in it. I took a picture of it. So do, do they want to upload us permanently into metaverse and create the next universe for us virtually? Or are we to achieve this Neoplatonic formula, transmute it, transcend the physical dimension and live in our own universe? That's that's the true goal. So their job is to keep us coming back here and ensnare us into their propaganda and agendas. Make us argue white, black, Christian, Muslim, or Jew, Muslim, whatever it is. Their job is to keep the polarity going. Let's keep this thing spinning. There has to be some polarity. Hey, we got to get some people fighting against each other. You got to have a war over here. There, there, it's, just, it's not running correctly for the archons, for these imposers, if there isn't a disruption in the continuum. They represent the disruption of the continuum. So they're the only, when they say gatekeeper in Illuminati terminology, they'll say this person is a gatekeeper. There are real gatekeepers spiritually out there that's keeping us from ascending the level, see, some of us are in a state of consciousness, but we haven't reached the stage of consciousness. So we stay in a state of consciousness forever, then we never enter into different stages. We stay in one state. So that's what I believe, bro, is um, worship materiality. And they want to keep reincarnating into these trillionaire, billionaire families. Look up a, a tarot deck called the Tarochi deck. They figured out it's called the game of Saturn deck um, in the, in the uh, Tarochi deck. Um, they discovered that there was literally a formula mathematically dealing with spirituality and black magic of how a person can reincarnate and become a part of a cosmic predator family. So if there is a cosmic predator out here, like the boogeyman, these people this is one of the first tarot decks ever. And l notice all of the tarot cards. There's nothing holy about it. This is the only tarot deck that has no Christological images in it. Uh, I don't think this is it, bro. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know what that is. Uh, it's called the Sola Busca deck. Look up Sola Busca. There, there it goes right there. That first one. You can type in. Um, How do you spell it? Yeah. Uh, S O. S O L A L A right here. Uh, so, yeah, there Sola right Busca. Here. Yeah, Sola Busca deck. All right, all right. Now we got it. Yeah. This deck right here. It has it. no Christian. It's the only tarot deck on the planet that has no Christian iconog iconography in it. It's solely about Saturn. It's, it's called, the, the, the name translates to the game of Saturn. There's a book called the game of Saturn, Sola Busca. We just got the book. It's, the book is humongous. But these people, these images are showcasing just like in the regular tarot, tarot writer's weight deck, the, the journey of the soul across the ecliptic. This is talking about the journey of the soul to into becoming a diabolical predator spirit. Or Shout out to Mario. Demon. Symbolic studies. He's covered this before. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're everywhere, Mario. Yeah, Mario. Where, where aren't you, man? Yeah. So, yeah. So, you guys can look into that. These Illuminati families, they're following Sola Busca. They're playing the game of Saturn. So, it depends what game you want to play. You want to play the game of Saturn? You look, look at that image. Go back to that last image. Does it, he's, look what he's doing to that baby. Yeah. This is the Sacrifice. the Visconti Sforza deck too, which is one of the earliest decks as well. And what they did was they the the characters in the tarot are family members, and the devil card is missing. And the reason that they think that it's missing is because they believe that it was either taken and worshipped aside as some sort mm -hmm. of relic, or something funky is going on with that. But yeah, I've never seen this particular. I know that for a fact. I saw. This looks that like, was the famous one right there. That's famous. You see how the demon's talking to him? But go yeah, ahead. Yeah, and this looks like the forget the name of this. This is uh, the this is the mercurial being 
Um, oh. of, this is three different entities in one. I forgot their names, but it reminds me of that when you look at the 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 wings. That reminds me of a book cover that I have. Um, what's the name of that book? That same entity you have is on the front of this book. I have. I think I it's my, it. I, I I forget the name. It's like Mercury or a little something. I'll find it here in a second. I but can't remember the name of it. Yeah, you got the serpent dragon entity here. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is this is yeah, it's pretty dark, right? When you start looking through it all and what they're doing and the connotations that a lot of these things here's the oh, I got kind of like the fool of the dog there. Mm-hmm, I see that. This is this comes before writer's weight, so writer's rate pro- probably got some stuff from it. Yeah. No, but absolutely. I I agree with you. I, I believe that. I'm going to read I don't know if you've mm-hmm. ever read this book called The Mysteries of the Great Cross of Hende. I haven't. Is it the Hinde? Hinde sounds like uh, eleven. Is it, is it talking about something with eleven? I know the Hinde decagram is eleven point star. Or uh, is it something it's, else? It's this cross that they have. I believe it's in. I want to say Germany or France, somewhere over there. I, oh, okay. Anyways, okay. this, this right. book goes hard, and according to the Gnostic myth, at the creation of the world, the spirit of light was imprisoned by the powers of darkness this light the essence of god was trapped in human bodies as separate sparks of light our souls gnostic sects held that the goal of human existence was to travel the path of return the journey of the the individual sparks back to union with the original light through the process of redemption according Mm -hmm. to the gnostics who the gnostics were alchemists right according to the gnostics this world and its history are the works of the evil demiurge this is the false god or the evil one who built the worlds as a trap for souls or the light. And then they go on to say, as each soul is redeemed, it travels back to the source of the divine light, which slowly, as more and more souls return to it, becomes whole again. Eventually, when all souls have returned, the physical universe, being now completely without light, will end. So think yeah. of, think about that. Think about that. That's why how you're saying they want to keep us in this soul matrix yeah. net thing to keep the light because we are light we're humans being right we're humans being whatever this is and you, you mentioned earlier it's like it's taking a long time it seems like a long time to us but bro it might just be like seconds you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> like it might just be yeah. going on but think about that that's why they don't want us to escape maybe and that and you know the whole reincarnation thing because the light has to remain because once the light is gone it's done you know, the it darkness does. takes back yeah. over. Yeah. And um, going back to what you just described, that's the original story of Christ. A lot of people don't know the Coptic Egyptians took a form in literature of the Cres. That's the original word for Christ is Cres. The Christos or the Cres was talking about a, again, a Neoplatonic formula, but it's actually a spark inside of the original souls that came down from the Pleromas and they inhabited the first human beings and then what happened was the Archon started to incarnate through the DNA genetic template they started to have children that's what the whole uh, fallen angels laying with humans the Archon started to procreate and there became a archonic template of humans called a counterfeit spirit. It's called an antimamos in alchemical, alchemical terms. Antimamos is a counterfeit spirit. So you had one group, a small group collective that had the original shards of Sophia. Then you had a big collective group that have these archonic templates now. And their job, they're procreating to keep this little small group you know, here forever, keep incarnating and keep that light coming here so they can feed off that light, you know? So one day the sparks in this, this small group is going to go off. And biblically in revelations, they said that Jesus return returns with fire in his eyes. He has a sword, he's riding a horse and he just destroys everything. And to me, if you interpret that from the Corpus Hermeticum, we have literally within the black dot, the quantum point of the Sushumna, where the Kundalini energy comes from, the cold fusion within our bodies that formulates auric fields and toroidal uh, spherical uh, directions of spiritual energy. This one small point called the Bindu dot, 
or the Bindu seed or the Bija seed, within it is a subatomic bomb. Or it is set to go off as a subatomic bomb one day. And all of this little group that had the original sparks, all of them ignite subatomically and then poof, this dimension disappears. And then we're on into another avatar form. And these other beings, I don't know, they, they say they're cast into oblivion. They cease to exist. So, and by the way, this is called, it's a Giovanni Battista Nazari della Transmutation yeah. Metallica from mm -hmm. 1589. It's their mercurial alchemical demon is what they call it. And it's the sun, moon, and I forgot what else, uh, you know, and it's like this weird looking thing anyways so people it was in mark hetzel's look up mark hetzel's book what is it called the zelator look up the zelator uh z-e-l-a-t-o yeah oh there you go yeah 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 it was on that's the book out that i had that book is crazy <laughs> crazy bro Ooh, there's a lot of stuff in that book sounds interesting go uh goethe and all them and so to bring this full circle as we approach the end here, because you talked about the Typhonians, where we're talking about yeah. destructions of universes, alchemy, and, mm -hmm. and and if you really look at alchemy, the the de, the depictions of bringing down the celestial bodies and crushing them down and and purifying them in these alchemical. I mean, there's there's drawings of that, right? They're bringing down Saturn, they're bringing down all these planets, putting them in alchemical, boiling them. And the alchemists believe that through putrefaction, right, you could purify yourself. So putrefaction, purification, and then you were able to achieve the magnum opus. Well, you talked about the Typhonians, right, being pre-dynastic Egyptians. I've also, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll, and I think I've seen this again, I could be wrong, but Atlanteans, right? Yeah, they, they, they are the closest thing that we get the Atlantean culture from, yeah. And if you think of the, if you think about the story of the Atlanteans, mm -hmm. they pieced out of this dimension. Where'd they go? Nobody knows. Right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. a lot of ancient cultures, if you think, and I think this is what happens Maybe right about that. with a lot of these ancient cultures. We have Mohenjo-Daro, we have the Mayans, we have all these different cultures around the world that just up and disappear. Well, mm -hmm. what happened? What if it's this because a lot of those cultures practice what human sacrifice the the physics of the dark of darkness right they were they 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 were tapped into something and they understood a lot of these things that you and i are talking about right because they had that priestly class they had that shamanistic class who can interact with that other world and they they under they understood some of it bro and maybe not the whole thing but they understood yeah. a lot of it and that's why they did what they did so what if that's what you know typhonian atlantean and that whole thing of them piecing out. Well, what if they didn't disappear? And it was something part of their tech that they were showing right before they left. They, they showed it and then they just used it and they were like, all right, let's piece out of this dimension. Let's go on out. And, you know, yeah, it could be showcasing that we are ourselves or our spirit and soul has interdimensional technology. Mm hmm. To disappear. I mean, you hear about certain shamans that have the ability to go invisible, have ability to tap into super uh, ultra powers that the Bible strives to different priests or men of God. They call them men of God. But what God, you know, because <laughs> literally we're talking about creator God. Are you talking Yaldabaoth? Yeah. Are we talking Yahweh or we're talking what the Gnostics was describing as the God beyond gods, the you know, dweller the of the threshold, the dweller of the threshold, the guardian of the, of the threshold, all, you know, all that stuff. I, I love that shit, bro. That's my, that's my jam. But to bring it full circle, we'll end it with this because yes. allegedly the Ouroboros where we're talking about DNA and, uh, you know, latent abilities that we have as humans. Mm -hmm. Well, the Ouroboros allegedly is an, is a symbol hinting at the DNA, right? It, it, yes. It's a picture of the DNA. Now, this gets into the whole light thing again, where according to the legends, when the alchemists, 
achieves the magnum opus, the light transforms his DNA, right? The light from that reaction transforms his DNA. Now I'm going to put you on a book, brother. You got to read. Okay. I, can, I like that. I can pull it up here that talks about this. And it's the Ophanic Revelation, right? Mm. And it's about Enochian. Right? Oh, so, yeah. I study this stuff. Angelic Science in the End of Time, the Ophanic Revelation. And what this is by Vincent Bridges... R.I.P. Vincent Bridges, also one of the authors for the Great Cross of Hende, which is a cross in France that allegedly Falconelli had decoded and it pointed out to a place in Peru where you can go to escape the upcoming apocalypse. I did an interview with Jay Widener, one of the authors of that book as well, on episode, I forgot the name of the episode, but look it up somewhere. Okay. And so the ideas in that book is that the Enochian language is actually encoded in our DNA. It is. You know it's a it's a light language. Yes, uh -huh. you got it, bro. You got it. So we're gonna read this last part here. So after each soul, right, leaves mm -hmm. the physical universe without light, will end. And then he goes on to say, given modern biology's understanding of the light emitting and information carrying ability of DNA. And such a system's implication for the kind of holographic reality described by the Gnostics, such an eschatology of light gains a new and more scientific meaning. In this sense, we can think of DNA as a small fragment of the hologram containing the information of the whole, but constrained by matter, which it must animate in order to return to the great light. Therefore, mm -hmm. this eschatology of light Synthesized from Egyptian, Persian, and Hebrew elements can be seen as the framework supporting a variety of Gnostic traditions. These traditions included in the new messianic form of Judaism that became Christianity. So I've read this chapter like 10 times. And every single time that I go over it, I extract something new from it. And this whole book is like yeah. this, bro. This whole book is, is wild. Like it's my... You, dude, trust me. I'm gonna send it to you. You gotta read it. It's it's crazy the amount of stuff that 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 is in this book. But yeah, I think I'm a pride from it too. <laughs> the, the the I think the secrets of the secrets. I got my copy of the the right Agadias Gutman's book yeah. from yeah. Bavaria. Right, it's the library in Bavaria out of all the places. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's very <laughs> how how crazy is that though, though dude? That's like, wow, bro. That's, That's crazy, wild. right? Like it, it's it's it, sometimes you can't even you can't even like you know make make the stuff up. Like it, it sometimes the simulation really plays uh, on itself, and 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 I'll and I'll prove it to you guys too. Here, here's a here's the email that I got from the from the place, and where is it at? So the address. So right here. So so this is in German. I had to translate. I. I I got the the download and everything and check it out right here Bavarian mm -hmm. State Library. Wow. So the Department wow. of Manuscripts and Early Printed Books of the Bavarian State Library. <laughs> wow. There you go. That's where Trump family from too, Bavaria. You can't make this stuff up. So the more I dig into this stuff, the more it starts to make less sense to me okay so there i said it the more i look into it the less sense it makes dude ani this was great yes, this is it's really there's a lot on the table still to talk about bro like there's it is like, yeah but like, that's just it's, it's always amazing though that's just the tip bro this, this episode is gonna be people are gonna love this bro so it's sure will, bro and i anything, appreciate you man anything else you want to leave the listeners with before we we get out of here just com continue to do your own alchemy. Continue to work on yourself. You know, transmute. Don't stay static. Keep moving. And redeem yourself. You know, don't look to anyone outside of yourself. You know, and the information is going to expand. Your consciousness will expand. And we're going to keep giving it to you. You're going to take it. <laughs> you gonna take this <laughs> information. <laughs> Let me plug your stuff real quick for the people where they can find you. Where yes, they sir. Dig more of your stuff because you do great research. And if you like the the, it's black belt. You know what I'm saying 
It'll scare you away. It scares me sometimes. So so just be prepared if you go ahead and peek through the right into better the be abyss. Ready. You better be prepared. <laughs> you better be ready. <laughs> yeah, you guys come on over. Aniosaru YouTube. Just uh type in Aniosaru. Patreon, we get a little bit even more deeper. You go to patreon.com slash T H E underscore spiritual shade room. Follow me on Instagram, spiritual shade room. Number one. Awesome. And follow me, tjojp.com. And it was great. Make sure to thumbs up, subscribe, share with friends, family. Leave a five-star review, too, if you're listening on the RSS feed. It does help the show out. And I will be reading five-star reviews. So make sure to hit that up. And also... Call in, leave a voicemail too. I, I set up a Google Voice. Let me give that that number out. Let's see here. I just started plugging this a little bit ago. I think I already got I might already have one. I might already have one voicemail. Or somebody tried to call, but they didn't leave a voicemail. Come on, bro. So four four oh seven four seven six four six zero six. That's four zero seven four seven six. Four six zero six. Call in. Tell me something cool. All right. So, as always, everyone, catch you on the other side. Stay safe. Love each other. And yeah. Bye bye. <laughs>